What's up? My name is TechNobber here for Troubleshoot and welcome back to another video. In this quick video, I'll be showing you how you can go ahead and install the Google Play App Store and Google Play services on the Windows subsystem for Android. A couple of applications, including Snapchat, don't work until you have the Google Play Store services installed. And of course, you might want to download apps from the official store, although it's not officially on the Windows subsystem for Android, the WSA. As far as you may know, there was a video released by a YouTube channel called A Delta X Internal and A Delta X shared a script on their GitHub page. The video doesn't have any talking, it's just got a bunch of text. And as far as I understand, this is the original source of where it comes from. So this is the guy that I'll be following along with. And of course, you'll have my voice rather than text to follow along with. So let's go ahead and begin. In the description down below, you'll find a link to their GitHub page. Do note that throughout this video, we will be reinstalling your WSA completely, meaning that there is a 1.2 gigabyte download if you don't still have the MSIX installer on your computer or you install through the Windows Store. And on top of this, you'll lose all of your data and currently installed applications inside of the WSA. This is currently the only way of doing it. And of course, we'll end up with a rooted Android as well, which is a positive. So let's go ahead and begin. Heading across to this page, there is a YouTube guide, as I mentioned earlier, but we'll be starting this here. Do note that sign-in isn't currently working unless you're using the fix at the bottom, but I'll be showing you that in this video. First of all, we need to download the MSIX bundle for installing and using the Windows subsystem for Linux. That'll take you across to this page here. We'll need to copy this text over here, select product ID on the left-hand side, paste it in, change it to slow and click the tick. This will then search for packages, which we can download from the Windows Store. And of course, installation will be somewhat similar to my previous video showing you how to install the WSA. So at the very bottom, we'll find a Windows subsystem for Android MSIX bundle 1.2 gigabytes. We'll be downloading this by clicking on it or opening it in a new tab. And of course, I'll need to tell Edge to keep this file. All we have to do is wait for the download to finish. Though, of course, because this is my second time downloading it, I still have the file here. And we'll head back here. So install WSL2. Ubuntu is what we use for this guide, but any other distro will work fine. So for this, what we'll need to do is make sure we have Ubuntu installed and of course the Windows subsystem for Linux, not the WSA. So I'll search for features, turn Windows features on or off, and you'll scroll down until you find the Windows subsystem for Linux. Make sure that is checked. Then we'll head across to ubuntu.com slash WSL, click download from the Microsoft Store, or of course you can just head across to the Microsoft Store yourself, click get and install it this way. Just using the website is a bit quicker as I don't have to navigate through the UI of the store. Here we go, so install. Now we just need to wait for the download to finish. This will of course take some time. While this is downloading and installing, we can start messing around with the MSIX files. So heading across to my downloads, here's the WSA that we just downloaded. I'll right click and open this with 7-zip. In the description down below, you'll find the 7-zip website or you can download the installer. You may be able to use other archive explorers instead. So show more options, 7-zip, open archive. Then we'll scroll down to the very bottom and we'll open the release nightly MSIX here simply by double clicking. Do you remember to open the correct one? This one's X64. At the very top, you'll find an ARM one. We're gonna be opening this one instead. There we go. Now I'll open up a new file browser and I'll head across to this PC, C drive, and I'll make a new folder here. Control shift N and I'll name it Windows Subsystem Android. No spaces, exactly like that. Oh, well, maybe not. I do have a typo there. There we go. Windows Subsystem Android. Then hit Control A to select everything. But before dragging it out, make sure to hold Control and then click on appxblockmap.xml, apexsignature.p7x, and at the very bottom, contenttype.xml. After unselecting all three of these, drag it out and into the folder that we just created. Then we'll head back and create a new folder, Control shift n then we'll call it capital G, apps with a capital A, WSA, all capitals, G apps, WSA. Open it up and we'll be downloading the entire repository as a zip. So heading back here, code, download zip. Then open up the zip when it's done downloading and we'll open the folder here, then extract everything from inside into this new folder and I can close out of it. Then in the description down below, you'll find the link to open G apps. When you get here, all you have to do is select x86-64, then 11.0, and finally Pico on the right hand side. After selecting these options, click the download button. If you're using an ARM64 device, select ARM64 instead. 
For most people, it'll be 8664. Then I'll click on the zip to open it up once again. We'll open up the hash G apps in our G apps WSA folder and we'll drag the entire zip into here instead of extracting it. Then we'll go back, back again into the Windows subsystem Android folder. We'll scroll down, hold control and select vendor, system EXT, system and product. Hit control C to copy. Then we'll go back then into G apps WSA images and we'll paste it into here, all four of these files. Head back one folder and we'll open a WSL terminal. You'll of course need Ubuntu or whatever Linux distro installed by now. I'll open it just to see that everything is working properly. As you can see, WSL2 requires an update to its kernel. So I'll head across to this link here by selecting it with left click, copying with right click and heading across to this in a browser. Then I'll click the download over here under step four, clicking it to open it up when it's done, follow through with the installer, then copy the code from below here and paste it into an administrator terminal. So terminal run as admin or rather right click run as admin. Yes, and paste it in here. There we have it. Now I should be able to open up Ubuntu and set up the operating system if you haven't already. So I've been installing, then I'll enter a username a simple password once again. And now we dropped into the WSL. Awesome. So let's go ahead and head across to this folder by right clicking inside of it and open in Windows Terminal. Then we just need to enter WSL as far as I understand. Awesome. Mount CG Apps WSA. Type in sudo su and enter your password. And because we're already in the right folder, we don't need to CD into a different place. Now we'll need to run apt install lzip and unzip. You'll find this command in the description down below. Hit enter and wait for it to complete. Though, if you see this, run sudo apt hyphen get update and hit enter. I'll hit the up arrow twice and run the install command. Then we'll also need to apt install dos to unix. Enter once again. Then in order, we'll be running dos to unix dot slash apply dot sh. Then dos to unix dot slash extend underscore and underscore mount underscore images dot sh. Enter once again. Then dos to unix dot slash extract, which we can just hit tab to autocomplete, extract the gapps pico sh, then dos to unix dot slash unmount tab once again, and finally dos to unix dot slash variables dot sh, and enter once again. I wasn't able to tab for that last one. Then if you'd like, you can run clear to clear the console and make things easier to see. What we're gonna do is type dot slash extract tab and we'll be running extract gapspico.sh. Wait for this to run through to completion. Then we'll be running dot slash extend and mount images.sh. Hit enter once again. And then we'll be running dot slash apply.sh. And finally, dot slash unmount images.sh. Now that that's done, we can head back and open up the images folder. We'll need to select all of these files here, not including the dummy file, copy with control C once again, go back twice and into the WSA folder, paste them into here, then replace the files in destination. Because we're working on the installer here rather than the actual WSA itself, you won't need to worry about closing the WSA just yet. Finally, head back to the gapps WSA folder, misc, and inside of here, we'll be copying the kernel file, control C, back, back, into the WSA folder, tools, and paste it into here, then replace. If you'd like, you can back up the original kernel file here. Then heading back to the Windows terminal that we have open, at the top, click the drop down and make sure you're opening a new Windows PowerShell. Type add hyphen app, x package space hyphen register space followed by this folder over here. So I'll copy this folder, control C and paste it in here. See Windows subsystem Android. If you have a space in the file name, you'll need to surround it in quotes slash app x manifest dot XML, then hit enter. If you see this error over here, you need to enable development mode in your Windows settings. Hit start, type in developer, open developer settings and enable this top option over here. Then click yes to enable developer mode. And I think you can leave these other two here unchecked. So we'll run the command once again. And if you're still receiving the error, you will need to uninstall your existing installation if you already have one. So I'll hit start, 
Open up the settings window, head into the app section, apps and features, wait for this to load and I'll be uninstalling the WSA. Right down here, Windows Subsystem for Android. Click the three dots, followed by uninstall and uninstall. Of course, any applications you have installed through it will also vanish here. You saw Among Us, Snapchat and other things vanish. If you'd like to know how to sideload apps, check the description down below. Then, now that that's done, try run the command again. And this time, things should be working properly. The WSA should install. If you see this about administrator privileges, you'll need to start up a new terminal as administrator. So I'll search for terminal, right click and run as administrator. Yes. Then we'll try the command one more time. Enter and wait for it to finish. Now we can close out of the terminal for now. Open up the new WSA that we just installed and inside of here we'll be enabling developer mode. I'll click the files button at the top here to start up the WSA and I'll uncheck show diagnostic data as we're using a modified WSA. Now we simply need to wait for it to start up for the first time, which will take quite a few minutes. Then once it's eventually started up, you can click the button again if you don't see this window over here, just to make sure that things have started up properly. There we go. You can see the file browser. Awesome. At this point, you're able to hit start and open up the Google Play Store. Then you'll see it's completing a whole bunch of installations. If you click sign in and absolutely nothing happens, you'll need to run a certain command. To run this command, we need platform tools. Even though it worked, I'll still be running the command anyways. On my desktop, I already have the platform tools folder extracted, but if you don't have this, you'll find a download link in the description down below to download the zip file from developer.android.com. Simply download the Windows one, open up the zip and extract the folder and extract it into a folder, something like this on your desktop or somewhere similar. Open up a new terminal in this folder right next to adb.exe and inside of here, we'll be connecting to our Android device or WSA. So having a look at the subsystem here, refreshing the IP address, we'll type in dot slash ADB space connect spelled correctly 192.168.205.239, which is my WSA IP address. Yours is probably going to be very different. Eventually it should say connected. If it says failed to authenticate, it still worked. We'll be typing in dot slash ADB shell and we'll type SU. Then set enforce space zero and hit enter. Now you should be able to head back to the Play Store and click the sign in button as usual. Then you'll need to sign in with a Google account, of course. After eventually logging in, the Google Play Store should open up. And there we go. I'm now signed into my account and of course on the Google Play Store. Now, before you head off of this video, keep two things in mind. Number one, we have a couple of folders on our C drive over here. You're able to delete and mess around with the G apps WSA folder, but the Windows subsystem Android folder here is currently live. The WSA that you're using is running out of this folder here. So deleting this will cause it to break. Though that does mean that you have easy access to all of the files and you're able to customize it as you see fit. Something that people do recommend is replacing this rooted kernel with the original kernel, getting your device to be unrooted. I for one will be leaving it as rooted, Though some applications don't work with a rooted device. Heading into the WSA folder, Tools, you'll find Kernel here. Of course, if you back that up, simply delete this modified kernel or rename it to, say, kernel underscore root and replace it with the original file. If you don't have the original file still, you'll need to open up the Apex that you downloaded earlier, open up the WSA Apex inside of that, head into Tools and extract the kernel from that archive back into here. Though before you replace this file here, make sure to open up the WSA and click the Turn Off button over here to completely shut down the device before doing so. Then you can start it again by clicking the files icon at the very top. So before I head off, let's go ahead and try to install something. And of course I'll install Snapchat again to see if that works properly. So apps, let's just download Snapchat from here. Hmm, not showing for some reason. Okay then, well, I'll sideload that. But for now, let's install Spotify. And Spotify is opening up here. There we go. I can of course log in and continue as per usual. But let's quickly test to see if the Google Play services are working properly. For this, I'll be installing the Snapchat APK, which I downloaded in my previous video, showing you how to sideload apps. For this, I'll be exiting the shell, which you just need to press Control D or type in dollar sign Q or dollar sign capital Q. That'll run ADB install Snapchat dot APK. I'll wait for this to install. Then once it's installed, let's try starting it up. And previously I received an error. Let's see if that error message has vanished. Yes, it has. 
log in and I don't think I know my details, but regardless, the error has vanished. Now you won't need to undo your kernel or anything like that unless you necessarily find something that isn't happy with a root. So just keep that in mind. Your device is currently rooted. Let's in fact install a root checker, shall we? I'll open the Play Store and I think it was just called root checker. And eventually I'll click agree, skip through these here and finally verify root. As you can see, root access is properly installed on the device. So you're able to install any root tools that you usually would and customize as you see fit. But anyways, that's about it for this quick video. Hopefully you found this video very useful. I know I did. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Techno over here for Troubleshoot and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.